a fellow Excel YouTubers. You're not going to believe it's Microsoft is having its first Data Insight Summit. It is going to be amazing. March 2016 in Bellevue. This link is below the video. Click on it and go check it out. Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1,271. Hey, if you want to download this workbook, Excel Magic Trick 1,271 to 1,272 and follow along, click on the link below the video. In this video, we want to accomplish a common task, extracting top 20 values and dates. So from this data set, we want to extract the top 20 call values and then show the dates for each. Now, we also want this to be dynamic. So if we, and I'm going to control down arrow, so we have like set over 700 records. And I want to be able to add new records at the bottom, control home, and have our solution update. Now, we're actually going to see three ways to do this. We'll see a straightforward formula that will not take into consideration duplicates. Then if we have duplicates, means ties for second and third biggest number of calls. We'll have to use an array formula. And then the third solution is really the preferred solution, Power Query. The only difference between our formulas and Power Query in terms of updating is that formulas update instantly. Power Query will have to be refreshed. Now also, there'll be below the video in the Show More area, there'll be a time hyperlink. So you can jump to whichever section, formula, array formula for duplicates, or Power Query. All right, so I want this to be dynamic. So I'm going to convert this to an Excel table, which means our formulas will not use cell references. We'll use table formula nomenclature. And that way, when we add new records, the formulas will update. And when we get to Power Query, the data set has to be an Excel table. With a single cell in our data set, we can go up to Insert Table or Control-T. There's the range. My table has headers. Click OK or hit Enter. Now I want to name this, so I immediately go up to Design, Properties, and Table Name or Alt-JTA. You can see I've jumped up here, and I'm going to call this F Calls and Enter. Now, a formula for extracting the top 20 is really quite easy. We simply use not the max function, which only gives us the first biggest. We use the large function. Now the array, we click in the top cell, Control Shift down arrow to highlight to the bottom, and Control Backspace to jump back to the active cell. And there's our first glimpse at table formula nomenclature. That is the table name. And then the field name or column header name is always in square brackets. That's the whole column. For the K, we simply got to tell it which one, first biggest, second biggest, third biggest, et cetera. That is a regular relative cell reference. Let's Control Enter, double click, and send it down. Now, because there are no duplicates, we can simply use a normal lookup function to look up based on the top calls and retrieve the date. Now, because calls, this column right here, is not the first column, we can't use VLOOKUP, we have to use another lookup function called INDEX. Now, the array part of INDEX is simply all the values you potentially want to go look up and bring back to the cell. So I'm going to click on the top cell, Control shift down arrow, Control backspace Table name is F calls. Field name in square bracket is day. Now, comma. Now notice we somehow need to find that value within this whole range here and find the relative position, meaning 1, 2, 3, 4. They call it row number, but it's really relative position within this range here. We could simply use another lookup function called match. Now match has a lookup value. We're simply going to look up top calls, comma. Now the lookup array needs to be this entire column, but I'm going to show you a second way to enter table formula nomenclature. I can type in F and a C, and I see my dropdown has F calls. Notice the icon shows a table, so I hit Tab. Then I type a square bracket. It will give me field names and other elements that I can analyze from my data set. I'm going to down arrow to get calls and tabs, and then close square bracket. Notice when I close square bracket, the whole thing turns purple, and I can see the highlighted range. Now, comma, the match type 
we need it to be exact match. That means because this is not sorted, we can't use one of the other two approximate matches. And if we use 0 for exact match, if we were to have duplicates, it means it can only find the first one, not the second one. All right, so I close parentheses. Here's that match. Now I close parentheses on match. In that row number of index is match. So I come to the end, and I'm watching the screen tip. Close parentheses. Now my formula is finished. Control Enter, and I can double click and send it down. Now based on each one of the calls, I've looked up the date. Now we want to go and check and see if this is dynamic based on the Excel table. So I'm going to click here, Control Down Arrow. And all I have to do to add a new record to a table is type directly below the last record. So I'm going to type 2 slash 2. And notice, all I did was type month and day. Because it's an Excel table, that number formatting will automatically carry down. So tab, and this was 52,000. Now, I'm not going to hit Tab here because it will add another record. I'm going to hit Enter. Now, Control-Home, and boom, there it is. It's totally dynamic, 52,000, and there's the date. Now, what if we had duplicates? I'm actually going to create a duplicate right at the top. There's 49,701, so 49,701, and Enter. And sure enough, just as we suggested with the match, doing exact match lookup, it only sees the first one. So even though there's a 49,701 control down arrow somewhere near the bottom, there it is right there, Tuesday, January 26th. It should be returning that date, control home. Now, the fundamental problem is this. We have one lookup value, 49,701. And we need to look it up over here in two different positions and return two different items. None of the lookup functions do that with built-in features. So we're going to have to switch over to an array formula. Now, the beginning part is the same. We use index. The array, I'm trying to return day, control shift down arrow, control backspace. There's the array. I type a comma. Now, whereas last time over here, we used match in the row numbers. The fact that we have two numbers that are identical, the match function will give us, in this case, one, two, it'll give us three, three. That's why it returned the two dates here. We need to get it to show three and then whatever that other one is down there, 750 or something. So two relative positions. We're going to have to do an array form that. Now, if the Argument here contains a 3 and a 750 simultaneously. Then we're going to have to use the small function to pick out the first smallest, position 3, and then the second smallest, position 750. Now, I'm not going to use the small function. I'm going to use a new function in 2010 or later called aggregate. Now, the lucky thing is, is that aggregate has a small, the first Argument is function number. We can pick whichever function we want, and I'm going to pick small, which means number 15. Now, why in the world are we going to use aggregate instead of small? Because this calculation is going to involve an array operation. And array operations require a special keystroke. However, there are a few functions, aggregate being one of them, that can make these array operations without that special keystroke. So there it is, small function 15. Comma. Now, the second argument is options. And we get to pick whichever one we want. And we want ignore errors, which is 6. Because our array operation will contain a bunch of errors. In fact, every single relative position except for the items that match will have an error. So wow, is that convenient. We don't have to use like if error or if or something. Now, comma, the array. Remember, we're after relative positions. So I'm going to start off by creating an entire array of every relative position in this list. Control, Shift, Down Arrow, Control, Backspace. Now I'm using the row function. And if I highlight row and evaluate it with F9, it's going to give me a huge array. And you can see up here, 6, 7, 8, 9. But that's not what we want. That's the actual row number, 6, 7, 8, 9. I actually want relative position 1, 2, 3, et cetera. Control, Z. So from that, I'm going to subtract 
row. Now, this time, I'm simply going to use cell C6. So I'm going to type it, because I don't want table formula nomenclature here. I'm going to hit F4. Now, what does this do? Row gets a single 6 here, because there's only one row involved in this. But 6 minus 6 at the beginning, if I F9, you can see I have 0, 1, 2. I'm almost there. Control Z, now I simply add 1. And guess what? That entire array operation right there, if I highlight this in F9, that gives me all the relative positions. Now, from this huge list, I need to filter out everything except for the ones that match the criteria. So Control Z. And by the way, there are other ways to create an array of relative positions, but this version is the most robust. All right, so we're going to take that whole thing and divide it by our actual condition. I need to ask, is anything in this whole calls column equal to the particular top call number? So I'm going to highlight the entire column, Control-Shift-Enter, Control-Backspace, equal sign. And now I click on the relative cell reference. Notice as I copy down it, the criteria will move. Close parentheses. Now I'm going to click this whole array right here. Now I actually would like to highlight this little bit here and just show you. If I F9, this is giving me trues and falses. You can see right down at the bottom that true, that's the only one that matches 5,200. But all of these trues and falses are in the denominator. So Control Z, when I divide relative position by a false, I'll get a divide by zero error. When I divide it by a true, I'll get the actual number. So that, in essence, is our filter. If I highlight the whole thing in F9, all of the divide by zeros are filter. It's only the number divided by a true that gets relative position. And luckily, all those divide by zero errors, Control Z, will be ignored by that 6. Now, I type a comma, and the K means of that array of relative positions, which one do you want? The first biggest, second biggest, third biggest, et cetera. Well, guess what? Right here, I need one. Right here, I need one. But down when there's a duplicate, I need one and then a two. That's the perfect job for count ifs function with an expandable range. I'm going to type a colon, and then right at the first Right on the first F6, my cursor's flash, and I hit F4. Expandable, because that one is locked. That one is not. Comma, and the criteria is going to be the actual 52,000. That means that count ifs, as I copy the formula down, right here it gets a 1, right here it gets a 1, right here it gets a 1. But because the range will be expanding, when it gets down to the second one, it'll have a 2. Remember that K is telling that array of relative positions, which one it wants. And that formula will work. When I close parentheses on the aggregate, the entire aggregate row count ifs array construction there is going to deliver the relative position to index. Close parentheses. And I don't have to do Control Shift Enter because that aggregate function understands array formulas perfectly. Control Enter, and I'm going to copy this down. And check that out. There are no duplicates. Here we get January 3rd twice, but here we get the proper dates. January 3rd, 2014, January 26, 2016. And if I were to change this yet again, 49,701, three January 3rds here, but all the correct dates here. If I change this to 48,999, everything updates here. Doesn't work because we have a duplicate, but here everything updates. Now on to our third example is Power Query. And this by far is the easiest. Now in order to do Power Query in Excel 2010 or 13, you have to download Power Query. Just go to Google and say, download Power Query. And then you can download it and install a new ribbon tab. But I'm in 2016. All I have to do is go to Data. Get and Transform. Because this is already in a table, to get it into my Power Query editor, I simply click From Table. Same exact editor, whichever version you're using. First thing is I'm going to come over here and call this Top 20 Calls and Enter. Next thing is I'm going to change these dates, which came in as times. On the Home ribbon, Data Type, I can say Date. Now I'm going to come to Calls, click the drop down, and say Sort Descending. 
notice all the biggest ones are on top. Now I simply come to Home, Reduce Rows. And you've got to be kidding me. Keep Rows, keep a range of rows. I want the first row to be 1, Tab, Number of Rows. Hey, I want the top 20. Click OK. You've got to be kidding me. And when we download this to our sheet, it will be dynamic. There's all the steps that are saved. There's our name. I'm going to come over here and close and load to a table on a new sheet. I'm going to click Load. And just like that, we have loaded a table. Over here, we can see the new query that was created. Now, actually, I didn't want to put this on a new sheet. I'm going to Control X to cut this. And I'm going to bring this back over to 1271. Close the query window. Right here, I'm going to Control V. And check that out. There we have the exact same days and calls. Now let's go ahead and change something. I'm going to change this to 57,000. Right in position number four. Instantly, the formulas update. We have the error with duplicates here. But that column, by the way, with large, and this one works perfectly for formulas. But what about here? 57,000 did not show up here. No problem. All you have to do is come over and right click Refresh. And instantly, there are Power Query Output. Top 20 values with the dates are updated. All right, in this video, we saw how to take a proper data set, convert it to a table so we can add records to the bottom. We saw how to use formulas large. And then if we don't have any duplicates, we simply use index and match. If we do have duplicates, we use that same large, but we have to switch over to index, aggregate, row, and count ifs to get a formula that will dynamically update when some inputs are changed. And we saw the awesome Power Query much easier than these formula solutions. All right, we'll see you next video. Hey, fellow Excel YouTubers, you're not going to believe this. Microsoft is having its first Data Insights Summit. It is going to be amazing. March 2016 in Bellevue. This link is below the video. Click on it and go check it out.